Hello, YouTube. I'm back. I'm back. Happy New Year. This is a brand new year, 2024. I must say, back when I was younger, man, I I would write down the year on paper. I think it was like 1976 or 79. And I remember one time I projected myself I could I could only go as far as two thousand because I couldn't figure out how to do that. And I said, "Oh, the world won't last that long." And here we are in twenty twenty four. So the world keeps on turning. That's all I gotta say. But I, I want to talk a little bit about the new world, the so called new world order. So many people are talking about it's a new world order. The new world order is coming. And I don't disagree with people who believe that, but I'm just going to give you my opinion on this so-called New World Order. I'm just going to read uh, from Ecclesiastes, the 8th chapter, 8th and ninth uh, verse. I mean, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, the 1st chapter, 8th and ninth verse. All things are wearisome. More than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear is filled of hearing. The ninth chapter. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. So just reading that that those two scriptures. It tends to let me know that there is no such thing as a new world order. The generation that leaves its order, the things that they created, their reality, is pushed out by a new generation bringing their order in. But it's still nothing new. I, I wrote some things down about what we thought was new and, and and I wrote it down as far as my lifetime and the first thing I thought about I went uh, further than my lifetime you know you think about uh, inventions and fire when man invented fire accidentally or however that was something brand new so fire is essential for us to survive in the cold heat but just the things in my lifetime, I can just remote control TV. There was no such thing as remote control. Your little children were the remote control. My dad would say, uh, Mary, come here and change this channel. So you had to go in there. And, and sometimes you didn't have a knob. You had to get the pair of plows and hold on to that little boat and turn it. If that wasn't what he wanted, no, turn it to the next one. So you turn it. No such thing as a remote control. We didn't even have a color TV. And, and not so much as we didn't have it, it wasn't invented. Microwave ovens. And this is this is something so simple. There was no such thing as pantyhose. We had stockings and garter belts you had to wear. The... Uh, washing machines we finally got a little uh electric but you had to run your hand to, to wring it out so that that was new and the dryer the dryer was the uh the hang the clothes on the line that was your clothes dryer and i could go on and on i'm sure you, you could do it and and just you younger people if you write down things that you remember and write it down, and you look back five years, that thing has become obsolete. So when something becomes obsolete, it's replaced with something new. So it is a new thing, but the scripture said that the new thing will become old. So, and the thing about it, it's, it's funny to me now, you know, we had the vinyl records, and that was something, oh man, look at that. And vinyl records became obsolete replaced with the CDs and then the DVD players, all that. But look what's coming up now. The vinyls are coming back. So what was old is new. 
and then the new is going to become old again. So the, the, the thing I want to really talk about, maybe a touchy subject, but the way the gay agenda, uh, when it first started that movement, uh, the people that the young people that were coming out of the closet, or either the ones that was proclaiming their sexuality back in the oh, early 90s, you had to be quiet about it. My son, when he came out, it, it was kind of a hush hush thing, but I knew this when he was two years old, just a glimpse, I saw it. And then when he did come out, I had the nerve to try to cry and be hurt. And spirit shook me and said, don't you dare cry. You've been knowing this since he was two years old. I dried my tears up. I said, oh, I forgot. <laughs> so, but family members were in the persecution mode and, and this and oh, did you hear about it? He so and so and so and so. And even in the church, the church members, they were just, oh, it was ugly. And then within less than five years from that, these main people that were pointing and ooh and on. By the time their kids, their younger kids, oh, they, it's mostly their grandkids. When their grandkids be, began to proclaim their sexuality, well, they were gay. And this hurt a lot of people to their heart. But being a homosexual is nothing new. If it was something new, why would the Bible say that it's an abomination for a man to lay with a man or a woman to lay with a woman or bestiality. All this is old. Mankind has been doing this, but it becomes new when you've never seen it before. So this new world order, the order comes in with each generation. And my generation, and the generations do overlap because I'm, almost 70, and those people who are, say, 78 or 79, they dragging on a younger person, somebody younger than me is included in their generation, and I'm taking somebody who's much younger than me, but it's generations overlap. That's what I'm trying to say. So a new world order could mean a lot of things to different people, but it's not going to be some kind of thing that's so brand new and we can't do this and we can't do that. But when the things that we can't do, it's a gradual change. And uh, uh, some people say gradualism, that's what it is. It's going to be a gradual thing, but it's not new just because it's gradual. It's not new. So those of you who are worried about that, please don't worry about the new world order because it's nothing new. It may be new to some other people but if they if you recall go back and down your memory book you say oh i remember that so that's why i talk a little bit about the new world order don't uh get all excited about that and the antichrist because when i came up we came up in a strict thing and the antichrist the way I was taught, the Antichrist, the word anti is is translated wrong from Greek. The anti means in the place of. It doesn't mean against. It means in the place of. So when that word first came out, in the place of Christ, it was the Pope. So the people ran to the Pope and he was, I'm in the place of Christ. That's where... That's what I was always taught. So those of you who are saying uh, Barack Obama is the Antichrist and blah, 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 blah. This is just what your generation is proclaiming because this has been proclaimed through all generations. Jesus is on his way back. That was proclaimed when Jesus died in his time. His disciples were looking up into the heavens waiting for his return. So that's not new either. It's not that I'm preaching against Jesus on his way back and his return, but I believe the return of Christ is when we remember our Christ self. When we, when we go back to 
our original self, the peace that we were born with, the comfort that the Holy Spirit brings to us. That's the return of Christ. Christ returning into your soul, your being, your mind, your heart. That is the return of Christ. So you're looking up in the stars and about to get crooks in your neck and this and that and that. The return of Christ is when you return to your God state of mind. So that's all I got to say. And this is just enough to give you um, a little boost on your journey for the number 2024. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.